You sound like a toddler. <laughs> it's like I'm trying real hard to do something sneaky. <laughs> I was playing the live episode to Ali, and she... It was so hard to understand us. Was it? Oh, it was just echoey? Yeah. Yeah. Um, she laughed at the beginning where you went, eh, <laughs> to get into your seat. <laughs> yeah, it's the classic page, eh. I get comfortable. Got to make a sound every time I stand up. Oh, <laughs> oh! You're not an adult until you start making noises when you get up and sit down. <laughs> you have sound effects for your life. Mm -hmm. Good times. Oh, everything's moved around over here. Yeah. What just cracked? I don't know. Was that me or you? That was you. <laughs> your snap, crackle, and pop, baby. Welcome to the 59th episode of Beer and Fear. My name is Zach. And it's Paige. Wait, it's... actually. <laughs> is it? No. Are you changing your name this episode? Uh, yeah, um, Debbie. All right. Zach and Debbie. <laughs> Beer and Fear with Zach and Debbie. That sounds weird. <laughs> this episode is about Elizabeth Bathory. Mm. I think that's how you say her name because she's got the weird accent. Bathory. Over... Bath... Yeah, ba bath... Battery. Bath... Elizabeth Battery. <laughs> She's got the weird accent over the A, so I don't know if that means anything. Did you Google Translate it? In whatever language that is. I'm not telling you to do it now. I'm just asking if you did it. I didn't. What? I don't even know what ethnicity her name is. Where is she? F I don't know anything about this lady, and we're doing an episode about her. It's weird. You just did a bunch of research on her. She was born in Hungary, so it's yeah. a Hungarian name. However, you say Bathory with the A and the dash in Hungarian. It's on Elizabeth Bathory. We're going to talk about her... Um. Yeah, how was your week? It was good. It's good. It's good. <laughs> your week's good, and our beer's good. It's good. It's good. Um, work was great. We had our live episode. That was wild. Oh yeah. Can't believe we did that. Can't believe people actually showed up. Uh, do you want to do another one? Yeah, sure. All right. Well, we got to start researching now if you want to do one in November. Yeah, what the fuck? Yeah. Why did you just decide to ask me now? <laughs> we, I meant to ask you this question like after the episode. Yeah. But, but if we're doing an episode in November, we need to start you now. You know what? That's not fair because Megan was like, Megan made a comment. She was like, would you want to do another one? I was like, I, I, yeah, I guess. She was like, well, I gotta wait for Zach said he let me know about what page thinks. So yeah. Like, so I guess I'm aware. <laughs> just a little upset you didn't ask sooner. <laughs> Sorry. Oversight. But yeah, I mean, if, we, if we're if we going to do a November one, we need to start now. Otherwise, we can do you our next one. You want us to come back? Yeah. Otherwise, we could do our next one in December. Uh, but I don't know. Yeah, we'll do it in November. I'm going to find some time. It's coming up quick. We'll, uh, we'll brainstorm here. But yeah, we had our live episode. That was a lot of fun. It's on YouTube. It's public. You know, go watch it. It's You can see Warren Peach play. He's really good. He was amazing. It's better than we were. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Anything notable else? Anything? No, not really. My life is very consistent. I just spend my week working, spend the weekend. Saturday is my sleep-in day, so I sleep till like 4 p.m. Hell yeah. And then Sunday I go visit my parents. Live a very repetitive life. It's nice that you see them every week. Mm-hmm. What about you? <clears throat> what did I do? Oh, it was Halloween. Did you do anything fun for Halloween? I was at my parents. It was Sunday. Mm, that's so right. So they handed out candy to trick-or-treaters. My parents bought like a ton of candy. One of the candies they bought was pumpkin pie flavored Kit Kats. It's disgusting. Oh, they sounded good, but no, it was okay. just cinnamon. Oh, okay, disappointing. That was gross. I didn't. Uh, I don't think anyone stops at apartments on Halloween. No. Uh, so we didn't. I was also working. Was I working? I was working. It's a Sunday. I was working on Halloween. We watched scary movies at work. That was fun. Yeah, so snap. Yeah, streaming them on uh, Netflix. We got ice cream from. Uh, Oberweiss, they have this uh, special boo something ice cream. Boo batter? Yeah. Or bat brew. Oberweiss. Oberweiss is bat brew. Bat brew. Yeah, I had it. It was good. But the, like the purple ice cream? Mm hmm Yeah, we tried to order this. All four of us got it, and they were out of this, so they just mixed birthday cake ice cream with Oreo ice cream. So that's essentially what it is. Essentially what it is, but it wasn't purple. Yeah. Uh, but it was delicious. What else? Um, oh, man, what did I do? All right, uh, uh, Ali, 
What did I do this week? What did I do this week? Oh, yeah. We celebrated uh, Dia de los Muertos. Huh. Uh, we had an altar in the dining room huh. with all of our loved ones who have left us, uh, including... Uh, I don't, I'm not about to bring this episode down, but I had a really good uh, good close friend of mine pass away on uh, the 31st, this Sunday. So I was at his wake today. Um, his name's Dario, Dario Sanchez. We knew him by Wallace Ferdinand. He was the singer of my band, Cellarettes, for about half the time I was with them until Tom switched and became the singer. But he had a lot of really close friends and uh, in, in the punk scene. A lot of his family showed up. It was nice to see everyone. I'm happy that so many people came out and we celebrated the life that he uh, spent with us. And it was it was nice seeing all the photos and memories, sharing memories with my friends. But it was the first time that I've ever had to really go to something like that for like a close friend, mm. like the like the closest so far, the closest friend that I've that I've had to see pass. It's it's tough. Um, I, you know, I remember being a little kid and seeing uh, relatives pass. You know, as they get old. But he was pretty young, and I'm upset that he's left us. But uh, I I remember where I heard this, but it's something like someone is never truly um, dead until they are completely forgotten mm. by everyone. And I like that. So as long as you keep remembering your loved ones and you keep telling your other loved ones about them and that memory of them lives on, they're never truly gone. So... I try to be optimistic about stuff like that. But he was on the altar for Dia de los Muertos. Am I saying that right? Yeah. That was really fun. I made masks at work that we wore. It's pretty funny. I'll have to put a picture on the website. What else? I can't remember. That's about it, right? Yeah. I feel like I'm forgetting something. You say that every time. Yeah, because I don't write anything down. I feel like I was going to talk about something today. Stand by. Back. My phone tells me everything. Like here, you were at this place. Um. Oh, my. No, my birthday was the previous week. Work. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. We made some really good food. Live show. That's it. That's it. Let's get into the beer. Oh, yeah. The brewery for uh, episode 59 on Elizabeth Bathory is Haymarket Brewing. Hay is in hay or hay is in hay? Hay. Mm. Yeah. Haymarket Brewing. A market where you can get hay. And they also brew. Their main tap room is 9301 Red Arrow Highway in Bridgman, Michigan, 49106. They do also have a Chicago West Loop Brew Pub. At 737 West Randolph Street in Chicago, 60661. So they've got those two locations, but I think their main one is in the one in Michigan. They don't have an about page on their website, so I just pulled this from Facebook. It says, Haymarket Pub and Brewery features classic Belgian and contemporary American beer styles from brewing legend Pete Crowley. No matter where you live, what you do, or what walk of life you come from, Haymarket Brewing has a seat at the bar and a beer for you. We opened our brewery 10 years ago with a simple philosophy, make the highest quality beer we possibly can and deliver it as fresh as we possibly can. It's worked out pretty well so far. Our brewmaster, Pete Crowley, has won over 50 local, national, and international brewing awards. Trust us when we say our beers must be tasted to be believed. And we've combined those beers with probably the city's best, most inventive, made-from-scratch bar food. Add in a welcoming, festive atmosphere, and the result is one of Chicago's great casual brew pub experiences. I got all this info from their Chicago West Loop Brew Pub Facebook page. Oh, okay. Not their main taproom Facebook page. Oh. But, yeah, there's no about section on their way. It just has the beer that they have. So our beer is Blood Orange Blonde. Hmm. It's because blood? Because blood. <laughs> Does that sound any at all familiar to you? Is that the one that we've been drinking? No. Oh. No. It's the one you had before. Like the one... That your dad got you. Oh. Ah. <laughs> it may or may not be the same one. I can't remember. Who knows? I'm pretty sure it is. Um, 
But my dad got me this beer, and I was like, oh yeah, I think Paige has had this. We'll figure it out. This refreshingly fruity blonde ale will help to usher in warmer weather. We used a very liberal amount of real blood oranges to perfect this lighter-bodied summertime crusher. It is very cold out right now. It's not summer, but it doesn't mean we can't still enjoy this. Untapped says, brewed with blood oranges, notes of tangerine, raspberry, and grapefruit. Hmm. And real quick about American Blonde Ales, craftbeer.com says it's one of the most approachable styles. A golden or blonde ale is an easy drinking beer that is visually appealing and has no particularly dominating malt or hop characteristics. Rounded and smooth, it is an American classic known for its simplicity, sometimes referred to as golden ale. Mm-hmm. These beers can have a have honey, spices, and fruit added and may be fermented with lager or ale yeast. We may have had a blonde ale on the show before. Sounds vaguely familiar because I think I was talking about... What was that brewery that I really liked that had the um, combo pack? We always used to get them. One of Ocona. Mm. One of them was Big Wave, and then the other one, uh, Longboard. I think Big Wave was the Golden Ale. It's delicious. Uh, they're typically lighter in color, 3 to 7 SRM, lower in bitterness, 15 to 25 IBU, and generally low in alcohol level, 4 to 5 ABV. Best to pair with spaghetti and meatballs, pepper jack cheese, and sugar cookies. Interesting. 8.5% ABV, unknown IBU or SRM, and no page on Beer Advocate. Setting. Yeah. Oh, well. I don't like that. And while I grab it, I'm going to try and pull up the beer list so we can rate this. It's ready to go. Old ass laptop. Oh, beer and fear. There it is. Your list. Yep, it is. That's <laughs> funny. I've had this a bunch. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know what it tastes like. Yeah. This is such a bummer. So I think this is the first time that we're having a beer that one of us has had before. Mm. And we try to, generally try to avoid that. But, you know, I had this beer in my fridge and I hadn't tried it yet because I knew I wanted to have it on an episode. And I was talking to my dad about it recently. He's like, did you ever try that beer? And I was like, no, I'm saving it for an episode. He's like, you can probably find something easy to tie it in with because when I saw it, I saw blood. And I was like, that'd be easy. Mm-hmm. So Elizabeth Pathory. Yeah, you've had this before. Ale flavored with blood orange. I like that it's a sunset with an orange. It's pretty can. I do love the smell. It's citrus and refreshing, but it's not very mm. strong scent. It's pleasant. Yeah, it's flowery. It's not very foamy. Not a whole lot. Has like, it been a while since you've had it? Uh, I don't know, like a month? Okay. Yeah, there's no foam to this. There's like a little layer that sticks around. And even the stumps don't last long. I just love the smell. Mm. You can smell it more in the glass. It smells so good. What's that? That was a pistachio that uh, fell out of a thing that I knocked over with my foot, and I missed that one when we were picking it up, picking them up off the floor. You knocked over a bunch of pistachios. Yeah, it was bad. Clumsy. Yeah, it smells great. Looks like apple juice. It does. It's about that color. Mm. Pretty clear. No foam. Clink it and drink it.
Just totally in sync. <laughs> sip, contemplate, and synchronous sip again. Um, I feel like the blood orange is strong. It's there. With this one. Yep. The blood orange is strong with this one. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Stop! <laughs> and it sounds the same, too. God. We take... Not only do we sip at the same time, but our sips are equal in mm-hmm. volume of liquid. <laughs> yeah. It smells like blood orange. Tastes like blood orange. It's a very crisp and clean and mellow and easy to drink. Mm-hmm. Lighter beer. I do like this beer. Mm-hmm. I liked it when I tried it. It's honestly better in a glass, in my opinion. I've only ever drank it out of a can. Okay, well, this that's that part's new, at least. Yeah, crisp fruit. I don't know. Tasty. Crisp fruit. I don't know. <laughs> Adjectives. <laughs> I should be a professional beer reviewer. Mm-hmm. Crisp fruit? I don't know. I think you should start writing untapped or beer advocate reviews, but only in that way. <laughs> like short and to the point. Like one word sentences? Yes. Crisp fruit? I don't know. Here's your... Uh... Rest it on my foot. Ouch. What's that? This is a hard drive. Oh. Yeah. What's that for? Don't worry about it. Okay. It's got things on it. Interesting. Oh, man. We're almost to 60. What are we going to do for 60? Yeah, it's next episode. That's oh, your it's episode. my pick. Son yep. of a bitch. I've done like a ton of episodes. Come on. You do 60. I did 58 and 57. Um, I mean, we both did 58. I had to do the beer section. Yeah, it was technically supposed to be mine, mm-hmm. but we ki- we kicked it back. You know, oh, I kept so. getting sick. It's okay. Not your fault. Here, try it. It's good. It's good. I do all the things. Yeah, right? Oh, I have a three already. Um... If it does like point whatever, that's fine. I'll change them. It did. Yeah, I'll change them. I don't like that. Your laptop's oh, heavy. Oh, son of a... Dang it. Oh. I didn't want to happen. What was the point of the hard drive? Um... I guess I didn't need it, but in order for me to... With Max, you gotta, like, eject it and all that stuff, so... Two, three, four, five, okay. Okay. One. Two. Mm, this one's tough. Ah. So pleasant. Because I'm, it really comes down to the Hefeweizen, then this beer, and then Dr. Krankenstein. Dr. Krankenstein's really up there for you. Yeah. So I'm just trying to rate them in my head. Mm. I think one, two, it's going to have a three. Is that a pine cone? It is. Interesting. All right. Beer's rated. All right. Okay. <clears throat> Tell us about Elizabeth or Liz. She went by Liz, right? Oh, yeah. Liz Taylor. <clears throat> Do I have to? No. Nah. I'm tired. <laughs>
Man, me too. Yeah. Uh, Elizabeth Bathory was born in 1560 on a family estate in Royal Hungary. I'm not going to say the town. <laughs> not saying the name. Dude, it's N-Y-I-R Bader. Near? Nyer? Near? Nyer Bader? She spent her childhood at a castle. <laughs> <laughs> not saying the name. Uh, it's like Exid or Esid. Something like that. Okay. Her father was Baron George Bathory. What's V-I in Roman numerals? Page, come on. I don't know Roman numerals. Six. Thanks. Don't say page, come on. Like you think I'm lesser. Those are the easy Roman numerals. I don't remember them. Where, do you think I went to some private school that was like, you'll need to know these Roman numerals so you can probably praise Jesus? I don't know. I feel like they just came up as you yeah, schooled. Okay. Uh, brother of Andrew... Bonaventura Bathory. Hmm. Interesting middle name. Yeah. Or Bonaventura. It makes me think of Ace Ventura. Great movie. Great movie. Who had been voivoid, vavoid, vavoid, vavoid. You just short circuit? <laughs> of Transylvania. So that means he's a vampire. Okay. Her mother was Baroness Anna Bathory. I want to be a Baroness. I want a title. I think you can do it. I want to be knighted. You can probably do that online, probably. Like how you did your marriage thing. Or like how you can be a sir, right? Or an, uh, like where you own land. What are people doing now? You you can be a sir or a, a knight if you own land. Uh-huh. Like you can buy like a, I don't know. Uh, daughter of Stephen Bathory of Som- Somlio. Also the void of Transylvania. Void, 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 void. Um, bu- 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 bu. It's basically the highest ranking official in Transylvania. Oh. Where was I? Who was of the uh, Somlio branch through her mother? Elizabeth was, Elizabeth was the niece of the Hungarian noble Stephen Bathory, the king of Poland, the Grand Duke of Lithuania, of the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth and Prince of Transylvania. I want to be like a Prince of Transylvania. I have a lot of goals. I think you can be all those things if you set your mind to it. Mm-hmm. Her older brother, Stephen Bathory, served as a royal judge of Hungary, or Judge Royal of Hungary. Mm-hmm. As a child, Bathory suffered multiple seizures that may have been caused by epilepsy. At the time, symptoms relating to epilepsy were diagnosed as falling sickness, and treatments included rubbing blood of a non-sufferer on the lips of an epileptic, epileptic, or giving the epileptic a mix of non-sufferer's blood and piece of skull as their episode ended. Why do you just have pieces of skull available? Who comes up with this stuff? Crazy people. A proposal made by some sources in order to explain Bathory's cruelty later in her life is that she was trained by her family to be cruel. Stories include a young Bathory witnessing brutal punishments executed by her family's officers and being taught by family members involved with Satanism and witchcraft. Again, there is no hard evidence for these claims, and so they remain unsubstantiated. Bathory was raised a Calvinist Protestant. As a young woman, she learned Latin, German, Hungarian, and Greek. Born into a privileged family of nobility, Bathory was endowed with wealth, education, and a prominent social rank. At the age of 13, before her first marriage, Bathory allegedly gave birth to a child. The child, said to have been fathered by a peasant boy, was supposedly given away to a local woman who was trusted by the family. At the age of 13, Mm -hmm. before her first marriage. Mm Mm-hmm. She had a baby. The woman was paid for her actions and the child was taken to Wallachia. Wallachia! (laughs) Evidence of this pregnancy came up long after Elizabeth's death through rumors spread by peasants. Therefore, the validity of the rumor is often disputed. I love that word. Disputed? Validity. Oh, validity. Yeah, that's a good word. That is a good word. In 1573, Bathory was engaged to Count Ferenc, 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 Nadasti, 
a member of, I'm guessing, the Dasty family. And what was probably a political arrangement within the circles of the aristocracy. Aristocrat. Arist- aristocracy. Aristocracy. <laughs> Those words suck where it's like aristocracy and then aristocrat. Aristocrat. Yeah. How the, how the emphasis you know good? is... The Aristocats. Yeah, that is good. Cute movie. He was the son of Baron Thomas Nadasti de Nestad et <laughs> Borgesfold. <laughs> You're just making noises now. <laughs> Borgesfold. <laughs> and Orsolia Kanazasi. Kanazasi. Kanazai. Okay. Bathory and that dude were married at the palace of something yeah a just a palace no it's like v-r-a-n-o-v v-r-n-o-v <laughs> v-r-n-o-v nod toplu 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 on may 8th 1575 what it's a lot of crazy words it's like his... it's in another language or I something know, it's weird his wedding gift to bathory was his household Castle of Another word. I can't get my tongue to say it. <laughs> okay. C S E J T E. What's the J for? Doing parcel tongue. <laughs> Can you hear me? (laughs) Am I talking to a snake? (laughs) Situated in the little Carpathians. Not the big ones. The little ones. Not the Kardashians. Not the Kardashians. Situated in the... What's the little Kardashian? Which one's the little one? Oh, I don't know. Chloe? Sure. They all suck. Whoa! (laughs) Aggressive. It's basically near present day Slovakia, wherever this castle is. Wherever Slovakia is, you know, pointed pointed out to me on a map. I'm 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 uh, uh, noticing a lot of parallels with uh, you know you said Wallachia and Slovakia. Those are things I said. Reminds me of Dracula. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. That was weird. That was weird. <laughs> it's like a demon escaped. <laughs> oh, I had a tickle in my throat. That hurt. The castle had been bought by his mother in 1569 and given to Nadasti. 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 Who transferred it to Elizabeth during their nuptials. Ah. That's that's another fun mm-hmm. word. <laughs> Together with the castle, country house, and 17 adjacent villages. Yeah, people just own villages. It's crazy. In 1578, Nasty became the chief commander of Hungarian troops, leading them to war against the Ottomans. Chief Nasty. <laughs> <laughs> with her husband away at war... Bathory managed business affairs at and the estates. This role usually included responsibility for the Hungarian and Slovak people, providing medical care during the long war. And Bathory was charged with the defense of her husband's estates, which lay on the route to Vienna. Do you say route or route? I usually say route. Mm-hmm. The threat of attack was significant for the village of... Sujet? The the village had been previously plundered by the Ottomans. Um, there were several instances where Bathory intervened on behalf of destitute women, including a woman whose husband was captured by the Ottomans and a woman whose daughter was raped and impregnated. Mm. Bathory's daughter, Anna Nanasti, was born, <laughs> was born in 1585 and was later to become the wife of Nicola... I don't know if it's the sixth or if it's V. Probably the fifth. V is five. Oh, yeah. But it's, yeah, it would be uh, the fifth. Zrinsky. 
<laughs> Bathory's other known children include Orsolia, um, who would later become the wife of Istvan II Benio. Benio? Benio? I'm supposed to know all these people. Yeah, you are. Catalan Nanasty. <laughs> <laughs> Andres Nanasty and Paul Nanasty. <laughs> so many Nanasties. <laughs> she like kids. Some chronicles also indicate that the couple had another son named Miklos. Although it cannot be confirmed. He was too Nanasty. Yeah, he was too Nanasty. And it could be that he was simply a cousin or died young. Hmm. As he is not named in Bathory's will from 1610. Hmm. All of... Oh, God. All of um, Elizabeth's children were cared for by governesses and Bathory herself. As Bathory herself. <clears throat> Ferenc, Fer Ferenc, the nasty, hmm. died on the 4th of January, 1604, at the age of 48. Although the exact nature of the illness which led to his death is unknown. <coughs> My throat hurts. Mm -hmm. um, where was I? It seems to have started in 1601 and initially caused debilitating pain in his legs. From that time, he never fully recovered and in 1603 became permanently disabled. He had been married to Bathroom for 29 years before dying. He entrusted his heirs and widow who would eventually lead the investigation into Bathory's crimes. Uh, mm. Georgie Thurzo is the one that would look into... Georgie? Georgie. Was he in a nasty? He, no. Georgie in a nasty? <laughs> Georgie Thurzo. Oh. He would look into the crimes mm. that he will get into. Mm-hmm. And by he, she means me. Yes, me. Me is he. Is that it? Why are you fingering the mic? It's an uh, interesting design. <laughs> yeah, it's a... Okay. Stop dying. I always laughed at... Uh, when I was, you were in high school, like, you're reading a book, an older book as a teenager. It's mm -hmm. like, he fingered the key in his head. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh my god. He, don't, don't use that verb he ever. He diddled the doodle. <laughs> Uh, my section's short. It makes me want a hot dog real bad. <laughs> what is that? Legally Blonde. Oh, they say that in Legally Blonde? Yeah. What part? Uh, Legally Blonde 2, I think. Oh, I didn't see that. Or was it 1? No, it was 1. I don't remember anything about a hot dog in Legally, Legally Blonde. I only saw the oh, musical, that. not the... um. You saw the musical and not the movie? Yeah. Because I did sound for the musical, that's why. Oh my god, look at you go. What the hell? Love it. <laughs> okay. The sequel also had gay dogs. Gay dogs? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I don't remember any of that. So, Elizabeth Bathory. Yeah, that bitch. Also known as the Blood Countess. Is a 16th century Hungarian aristocrat. Ranked in none other than the Guinness Book of Records as the most murderous murderous. Most murderous, murderous. Of all time. Interesting. Most, the female who is murdered the most. A murderous, murderous. She murdered. I'm going to read two separate stories. They're both kind of short. Uh, the first one is widely circulated. Uh, the widely circulated account of her being a cold-blooded killer. And the second part tries to look at her story from a different angle. In which she was a victim of a conspiracy. Interesting. So, I'm just reading verbatim here. This is the Blood Countess, Countess Dracula mm -hmm. versions. She's got some parallels with Dracula. That wasn't a, a coincidence. It seems that the Carpathian killer, whose fear of aging knew no reasonable bounds, 
figured a beauty wash in blood would stem the onslaught of years. Elizabeth Bathory was a turn-of-the-17th-century Eastern European aristocrat who believed that bathing in the blood of virgins would maintain her youthful looks. Apparently, some 600 young women came to a premature end in order to keep her macabre fountain of youth flowing. How far will people go to secure eternal youth? Cleopatra bathed in the milk. Former Indian Prime Minister Morarji Desai regularly drank his own urine. And Michael Jackson had his face rebuilt. (laughs) No one, however, has gone as far as 16th century Hungarian Countess Elizabeth Bathory thought to have murdered 600 girls so that she could smother herself in their blood in an attempt to retain her youth and beauty. The accepted story is that Elizabeth, stunningly beautiful, was raised as Magyar royalty. At 15, she was married off for political gain and became the lady of the castle of Kishish Deep (laughs) in the Carpathian Mountains, now eastern Slovakia. In this picturesque setting of small fields, quaint cottages, and scampering goats, a horror of unimaginable proportions was about to unfold. Elizabeth's husband, a soldier, was off on various campaigns and life for her, was poundingly boring. She began to interest herself in the occult and invited people claiming to be witches, sorcerers, and alchemists to the castle. They taught her their crafts and intimate detail, and she was enthralled. Elizabeth's husband had a torture device he used to extract information from his Turkish prisoners, comprising silver claw-like pincers fastened to a whip to tear off flesh. When he went on campaigns, he left this behind, and Elizabeth began to while away the hours using it on debtors thrown into their dungeons. When her husband died, Elizabeth longed for a lover to replace him, but she was then 43 and realized she had aged, and her angelic complexion has faded had faded, which put her into a smoldering rage. She was next in line to become ruler of Poland and desperately wanted the job as she was a woman far more educated than those around her, speaking four languages, while the Prince of Transylvania was an illiterate boar. Maintaining her youth and vitality became central to this developing plot. Vanity, sexual desire, and the thirst for political power combined into a frenzy obsession for Elizabeth. She knew that, without youth and beauty, she would forfeit everything. Her mood deteriorated, and one day, as she struck a servant girl for a minor oversight, she drew blood, some of which spattered onto Elizabeth's skin. Later, she was convinced that the part of her arm where the girl's blood had dropped looked fresher and younger. For a woman who believed in magic, there was an obvious conclusion. Her complexion had improved because the young girl's blood was full of the spirit of life. Blood was an elixir of youth, and if nature was going to steal her youth, she would take it back from others. When she consulted her alchemist, they agreed with her, and Elizabeth was convinced she had discovered the secret of eternal youth. With her trusted helper and other sorcerers, she roamed the countryside by night, hunting suitable virgin girls. They were dragged back to the castle and hung upside down by chains around their ankles, naked and still alive. Their throats were slit and blood drained for Elizabeth's bath. When there was a really lovely young girl, Elizabeth would drink her blood from a golden flask, but as her taste for this, this depravity increased, she'd drink directly from the stream of blood as the writhing body hung from the rafters. From then on, killing became a ritual. As the blood dripped onto the stone floor, Elizabeth would smear it all over herself, the smell steaming to intoxicate her. She would kneel by the victim, tearing at the flesh with her teeth and sucking the wounds. With three or four girls stretched out on the floor, she would wallow ankle-deep in blood. Although she had held off her political foes after five years of this madness, Elizabeth realized the blood of peasant girls was having no effect on her skin. She decided the blood must be defective, and better blood was required. Obviously, that's the problem. With incredible cunning, she established an academy in the castle, offering to take 25 girls at a time from cultivated families and finish their educations. These students were consumed in the same way as the peasant girls who preceded them. It was at this point that Elizabeth became careless for the first time in her horrific career. During a frenzy of lust, four drained bodies were thrown from the walls of the castle, and the error was realized too late. The villagers had already seen and identified the girls, and the secret was out. The mystery of where those girls had gone began to be solved. 
Word of this horror rapidly spread and reached the Hungarian emperor, Matthias II, who ordered the countess placed on public trial. Her aristocratic status meant she could not be arrested, so Parliament passed a new act to remove this privilege, and Elizabeth was brought before a formal hearing in 1610. By the final count, 600 girls had vanished, yet Elizabeth admitted nothing. Her assistants and sorcerers were burned alive, but the countess, because of her noble birth, could not be executed. Instead, she was damned to a living death, sealed in a tiny cupboard in her castle, and never let out. She died four years later without a word of remorse. And now... The rest of the story. This is the alternate version, which um, kind of paints her as a victim to, you know, she's not as sinister, not as Dracula-like. This is just how things happened for her. The story of Elizabeth Bathory is surrounded by a lot of folklore. There's a lot of uh, supposition going on about the truthfulness of the accusations. Her story is so fascinating that even today, after more than 400 years, game designers made a slot game based on it. That everyone can try it with a free $10 no-deposit casino bonus. The plain story is this. On December 29th, 1610, Bathory, a 50-year-old widowed noblewoman of enormous wealth, was sitting at dinner in one of her castles. When the Viceroy of Hungary arrived at the gates, servants were hustled away to be questions, questioned and Bathory herself was removed and put under house arrest. She was never seen in public again. A trial was held without the accused present in which the court was told of female corpses unearthed at the castle. Girls had allegedly been beaten, abused with lighted candles, needles, tongs, and hot irons, and had been caused to freeze to death in the snow. Bathory was said to have presided over these tortures. When she was too tired to wield the instruments herself, she was supposed to have retired to bed, ordered the girls to be brought to her, and bitten lumps of their flesh. Stories were soon being told of blood-spattered rooms, and it was believed that the Countess had been caught, literally red-handed, in the process of torturing and killing yet another victim. The suggestion that Bathory may have been insane uh, through inbreeding seems particularly unfair. Her letters show that she was a level-headed wife and mother. Her husband, Count Bathory, died when she was, when she was in her early 40s, and she immediately became a very competent manager of his vast estates. This was probably the cause of her downfall. Women in 17th century Hungary were supposed to retire and mourn after their husband's demise, but Bathory was a powerful public figure in her region. You will find a man in me, she boasted in one of her letters. There was a high-level conspiracy, male, of course, to get this turbulent woman out of the way. For modern writers to portray her as a lesbian dominatrix is an absurd anachronism. Since neither sadism nor female homosexuality were concepts that even that existed at that time, Vampires, too, were later inventions, and though Bathory was accused of cannibalism, nobody in her own time thought of describing her as a bloodsucker. The true vampires in the story seem to have been her accusers, ruthlessly, ruthlessly bleeding her dry of her rights, possessions, and freedom. Once she had been locked up and discredited, no further action was deemed necessary, and since the 600 corpses were probably a fiction, there were no bereaved relatives demanding that the murderer be brought to justice. Elizabeth Bathory died a few years after her arrest, while still confined in her castle. The Countess Dracula legend began to materialize around her name in the 18th century, more than a century after her death. This is not to say she did not murder people. She was a strong and aggressive woman by many accounts, after all. But 400 years after the investigation, it is impossible to display evidence supporting her innocence of her guilt. But it is reasonable to doubt she bathed in the blood of victims, and it is reasonable to think that the number of victims is exaggerated, exaggerated by local folklore. In the end, the first written accounts of her story appeared more than 100 years after her death. Which, which side do you believe? <clears throat> I mean, I would love to... I mean, I guess I wouldn't love... <laughs> It's just more fun for it to be that dramatic, but I feel like realistically it wasn't that dramatic. Yeah, probably there was a lot of, just like, uh, remember Jersey Devil? Yeah. A lot of folklore. Yeah. And a lot of the stories. Things get blown out of proportion. It's a game of telephone. He said, she said, you know? Yep. 
And that's where those Other stories things. come from. Mm-hmm. Great song, by the way. He said, she said <laughs> by churches. Yeah, it's just it's like realistically, there probably were not 600 victims. She probably did not hang people upside down, slit their throats and she drink their blood. Probably didn't bathe in their blood. Yeah. But uh, the stories are cool. Yeah. Do we have stories like that about current day people? Like, like what's, what's current day to you? Like the 21st century, like folklore people? I guess like what, like Michael Jackson or Bill Cosby or a lot of um, people who have been, I mean, Michael Jackson, not so much, but people who have been present in the news. It's like, oh, did you hear he did this? Oh, did you hear blah, 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 blah. Uh-huh. But they're not as crazy as they were like back then, I guess. You ever hear someone saying that Bill Cosby bathed in the blood of... Nobody did drug and rape a lot of women. Yeah, there was that. (laughs) Yeah, there was that. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Oh, yeah. You know, I did randomly Google active serial killers once because I was kind of curious. And are there many? There's like... The list that I got was like cases that were unsolved or like people who have like i guess murdered more than like Mm -hmm. three people yeah it wasn't anything that i was like Ooh. i guess all that all that stuff comes with history and time yeah what do you think of the beer fantastic forget what i gave it but it was a top three i gave it a three yeah, it was top three for me. Mm. Delicious, crisp, refreshing, easy to drink. How many times? Um, how many times? Crisp, crisp, refreshing, good. Open up seven up. <laughs> this I'm episode. I'm LeBron James. Mm-hmm. The orange is there. Yeah. I think that we have had a lot of beers that have boasted a citrus flavor, and we have come short. When it comes to that, they have um, come up yeah, short. Yeah, some of them. Yep. This one, not, not this the case. This one delivered. Yep. And I, I don't know if I've ever had a blood orange before. I definitely have not. I think they sell them at Trader Joe's. You can get them. I should get you, one someday. You can get them. You can get them. <laughs> blood oranges are ownable. I'll have to buy some and try They can't one. stop you. <laughs> get a blood orange. Fight them. Anarchy in the streets. <laughs> Get a blood orange. Yeah, so I don't know what or they taste like. Grapefruit. But... Or mm, <laughs> grapefruit. I saw a TikTok. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, it was like um, it was like POV of someone acting out being the mom and the son. Oh. And he like walked in the room with the grapefruit. And he's like, "Mom, this grapefruit's good, but it has a hole in it." Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Uh, and I've I've and I've seen that video and I still eat grapefruits. <laughs> I feel like I don't. I don't think they taste good. I, I like them. A little bit of salt. And they're delicious. Have you had grapefruit juice? It's tart. Yeah, it's it's very intense. Oh my god! <laughs> the first time I tried it, I had just moved back from Florida, and my parents were on this diet thing, and it required them to drink like grapefruit juice, like morning, evening, night. Or morning, afternoon, night. I would just kill myself. <laughs> I was, like, really excited because I love juice. I love tropical flavored <laughs> things. And it was from, like, Simply whatever, you know? Yeah. The one that does the lemonade. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, this is going to taste delicious. I'll have it with my sandwich for a big old glass. And I just sipped it and I was like. <laughs> yeah. It was it, disgusting. Yeah. It attacks your taste buds. Horrible. I want it to vomit. It's intense. I prefer it in cocktails. It's really good mm. in moderation and in drinks. But it's nasty. Never had a blood orange. I'm gonna try it. But I, I guess, I mean, it tasted like oranges. If I, if I had had a blood orange before, I would probably say it tasted like blood oranges. But I don't know the difference. Sure. But they're, it's tasty. What did you think of it? That was good. Excellent. It was good. I feel like I gave my description already. Yeah. It's about tasty. Oh boy. Yeah, I'm sleepies. Our website uh. is beerandfearcast.com. All of our episodes are on there. You can see the live. Uh, if you click on episode 58, that's the live episode. And we included a, a video. It's right there on the web webpage. You can watch the live show. If you weren't able to make it, uh, you can watch it for free on YouTube. We don't charge 
We're not asking for money. Just watch the video. Just your time. Just, uh, yeah. Spare a pittance of your time. You can watch Orn Peach play guitar, sing, beautiful angelic voice. He's wonderful. And our podcast it was a lot of fun. I want him to have my babies. All right, we should let him know that. <laughs> And we're at Beer and Fearcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Reddit, TikTok. And you can send us an email at beerandfearcast at gmail.com or oh, on, our, seal. on our about page. Oh, that's cute. On our about page on our website, you can fill out a form too. All of our video episodes are now public um, because they were going unwatched mm-hmm. uh, for the longest time. So everything's uh, been switched from unlisted to public and all of our live episodes will now be live. So this one's live, public live. Um, so you can watch that with us and we'll, you'll be able to watch it after the fact. Also, that's the only major thing that's changed. We'll try and play some games soon. Have a good day. It made me think of Johnny Depp. Why is the rum gun? <laughs> that was intense. Wee. Swears. <laughs> Cause it's over finally. <laughs> yeah. Get to stop listening. No, cause you, cause you made it to the first episodes. Yeah. Fight for it. <laughs> you keep saying it. It's been the only consistent thing. He got so mad at me when I started. Yeah, I, I, I remember the such a thing.